This episode of Unqualified is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. On the drive to and from my parents' house in Washington State, we almost always stop at two particular McDonald's, one in Salem, Oregon, and another in Eureka, California. At the moment, we are in the parking lot of the Salem location, and I just finished a Big Mac and fries. Even though we are just passing through, I appreciate the familiarity and feeling of community. The other day, I was looking through my mother-in-law's photo album and came across a photo where she and her friends are standing in front of a McDonald's wearing their cheerleading uniforms. I usually call my mother-in-law New Mom, but her name is Marsha. Under the photo, Marsha had written a note and I clocked her into letting me read it here. San Bernardino, California. I have so many memories of this McDonald's over the years. My father took me there on what I think was opening day. What a thrill it was as a young girl to order a chocolate shake, hamburger, and french fries. Then there was the time when my cousin Hinda and I were given a tour and allowed to take dill pickles by the cupful out of a huge barrel. We must have eaten a hundred pickles each. Everyone in my family knows the story of how I accidentally missed the ketchup container and dipped a fry into my milkshake. Now when I dip fries in my shake, it's on purpose. I remember when I was 12 years old, my mother and my cousin Noel Novak, Larry's brother, picked me up from dance class and we went for dinner to celebrate Noel's graduation from high school. Years later, when I was in high school, we would go to McDonald's every Friday night after the football game. I wish you could see this photo. Marsha couldn't remember if they won the game that night, but everyone is smiling as if they did. Wherever your local McDonald's is, there's nothing better than that wonderful feeling of community. Anna, we're recording this little intro in advance right now, so we don't have any feedback for the last episode. I'm sure there was plenty, but in case anyone wants to write into the show and offer some feedback, I know our male listeners, that's all they do because they don't write in for advice. Yeah. Hey, dear male listeners, will you, uh, will you also please write in for, uh, for advice and participate? Why are they in so weird... ashamed? Like, come on. No, I don't no, understand. I don't Is know. It... It's not that. It's your fucking gender, dude. It's like, you guys think you know it all. But I'm that way too. You told me the other day that I was a dude. And so I am like so guilty <laughs> of exactly what our male <laughs> listeners are doing. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so if you want to write in, if you want advice, if you want to give feedback, it's unqualified.com slash contact. And we do have a great show. We have Becca Cuffrin coming up and we're about to record the show later on today. But are you excited about this? I'm, I have so many questions. I'm so curious about her oh I and mean, the bachelor process I, yeah i yeah it's it's fascinating it's fascinating like the glossy the glossiness of of the idea of televised romance um so i i am i am really interested in it and i don't know if people always go on the show for the right reasons and now here is becca kufrin and now here is becca kufrin so tyler will figure out which one is print the, the right one <laughs> i hope tyler keeps that in <laughs> This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Osea. Wondering what to gift your friends and family this holiday season? Female founded over 25 years ago by a mother and daughter team, Osea's award-winning cleansers, serums, face moisturizers, and body products give you the results you want. Skin that looks and feels amazing. I recently got to try Osea's new body butter, which, like their now famous Andaria Algae Body Oil, transforms dry skin without being greasy, has the same incredible scent, and leaves your skin soft, smooth, and healthy looking. 
If my experience is any indication, you can count on your partner giving you a lot of compliments. This holiday season, stock up and share your new favorite clean skincare and body care with your friends and family. Unqualified listeners get 10% off your first order with promo code ANA at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order, and orders over $50 get free shipping. Gifting is always easier if you start early, so head to oseamalibu.com. Use code ANA. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by ZocDoc. Who gets excited about trying a new restaurant that has two out of five stars? When it comes to finding healthcare, don't ratings matter even more? ZocDoc is a free app where you can compare doctors, read reviews from real patients, and even make same-day appointments. When I finally called to reschedule my dentist appointment, I was told that my dentist had been retired for nearly three years. In my defense, parking was a nightmare. Through ZocDoc, I found a new dentist who had great reviews, took my insurance, and whose office was actually within walking distance. I was also able to book an appointment instantly without talking to a receptionist who made me feel guilty about not having my teeth cleaned for three years. My new dentist didn't make me feel guilty either and only suggested I floss a little more often. Whether you need a primary care physician, dentist, dermatologist, psychiatrist, eye doctor, or other specialist, ZocDoc makes healthcare easy. Now is the time to prioritize your health. Go to ZocDoc.com slash unqualified and download the ZocDoc app. Sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor who might be available as soon as today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash unqualified. Rebecca, will you help me um, pronounce your last name? Yes, it's Kufrin. Kufrin. Yes. I have that with my first name, Anna. Anna. Uh, yeah, people, you know, of course they want to call me Anna because that's how it's spelled. And I told my parents, I asked my parents a few years ago, I was like, why would you want to call me Anna if it's, if you're going to spell it like Anna? And my mom <laughs> looks at my dad and, and she looks back at me and she said, well, I told your father. So the, like in utero, apparently there was fighting about it, but I always feel like I come off like such a fucking jerk and I can never, anyway, whatever, name Wait, talk. Was there fighting over how to pronounce it or how, the, how to they spell wanted it? it? They wanted it to sound on, like Anna because that's my uh, great grandmother's name. Um, but yeah, I think that there was a spelling issue and, um, yeah. They didn't want to add an H in there. Yeah. And I remember like, I don't know. I just feel like, like I'm so pretentious and people kind of rib me about it. Like, Oh, it's on a, I'm like, it's not, it's not my choice. <laughs> it's my God given name. Yeah. <laughs> Cut me some slack. <laughs> Becca, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. I'm so, I'm so happy to have you. Okay. I have a few questions though for you. Okay. As you know. Of course. Okay, so were you a part of a sorority? No, I was not. Did you live in the dorms? We, I lived in the dorms. My school, we actually weren't allowed to have sororities because they you couldn't have more, I think, than like four or five girls living together because it was considered a brothel. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? yeah. I, at so first no sororities. I thought you were, I th at first I thought you were like going to the most progressive school ever. <laughs> you were like, no sororities, but what? Yeah. <gasps> That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you lived in the dorms? Yes, I lived in the dorms for one year and then just with girlfriends, l less than four. For the, for the remaining three years. <laughs> did you like that experience? I did. Uh, freshman year was tough. It was my, so my dad passed away when I was 19. So he was sick and my college roommate was sick. But um, I mean, I loved the last couple of years. I worked at a bar, bartended for a while, which was really fun. Had some crazy wild times bartending, but it was good. Okay. I want to hear about some of those <laughs> later. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. I'll give you the so, lowdown. Okay. So the, re and the reason like I was thinking about this with you was because I couldn't, it's always been really hard for me to make friends in general, but girlfriends. And I, I, so I lived in the dorms as well. And I did, I just have never had like a wide circle of friends. So thinking about like how you must have felt, I, I just, yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> I just don't know who I would have 
were there girls that you immediately felt close to? Uh, and yeah. I don't know, like how the girl it's, language works. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, I think everyone going into that position has the same fear. They're like, oh my God, am I going to find people that I can jive with that are going to like me? And I know before I left, my mom went in, she's like, just make friends. If anything, just make friends. And so I think most girls that especially night one, you meet everyone and everyone's nervous. Everyone doesn't really know what to do, what to say. And so you just really bond over that. And yeah, right away, there was some really great girls that were fun and talkative and outgoing. And then there were some that you could tell were really nervous, really in their head, kind of standoffish. But for the most part, they were all so great. I mean, of course, you get the drama throughout the entire season and some of the crazy starts to come out. But Really, I feel like I really lucked out with the group of girls that I was living with. I so would have been a loony <laughs> like night one. No. Oh, no. my God. Fuck yes. I totally <laughs> would. Yes, I would have. Yeah. Because I, as you can tell, I don't know how to talk to people. <laughs> but I think you would have been quirky and charming. And I'm sure the guy would have loved it. Thanks, Becca. <laughs> I would have given You're you really a really sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, wait. Speaking of that. We are going to go into some deal breakers, if you don't okay. mind. Of course. And um, I never want to make any of our guests ever feel uncomfortable. So please, just you can just tell me to fuck off if oh, stop. something that um, I bet the ABC execs love that, right? When <laughs> I, you don't have to say fuck off, Becca. I, I get to, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten some crap for swearing, and I'm like, that's just me, though, you know? So yeah. It pops out. Okay, so these are deal breakers for getting a rose. Okay. Do you give him a rose? If he just turned 18 last week. No, he does not get a rose. <laughs> I don't think I could do anyone like 24 or under. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Maybe even 25. There were a couple guys who were 25 and I was like, oh, I feel much, much older than you. Even if he says that he's an old soul? You know, maybe. I'll give everyone a fair chance, but... <laughs> Okay, uh, he tells you he is in love with you on your first solo date to LA Zoo. <laughs> At the LA Zoo, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can find love in the zoo, so I would maybe still give them a rose. All right. If I was really feeling it. If I wasn't feeling it, then definitely not. Okay. I'd probably send him home early then. <laughs> he calls you Becky. That's fine. I'd really? Still give him a rose. Mm-hmm. My ex used to call me Becky. My dad actually used to call me Becky, and so I find it kind of cute. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. As long There's as they told me to I have good hair. there, but <laughs> we'll get into that later. <laughs> as as, um, on a group date, he gets your initials tattooed on his leg. Mm. I mean, ballsy. So I'd probably still give him a rose. All right. And maybe I'm just very generous with these roses. <laughs> no, I think you're romantic. I think that's what it means. And which I mean, is you believe in love. I would make sure that they really want to do that. And if they were all for it, then I'd support them. You don't think it, because I think that it's a little <laughs> bit manipulative. <laughs> it's, it's a little strange, but I mean, I'd let it slide if they were a little tipsy. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> On your first group dinner date, he eats food off your plate. I think I'm fine with that too. I am too. Is that asking? If he just went on your plate, he didn't ask you first. You know, here's the thing. If I see mac and cheese, I'm going to go for it. And so I would probably do that to somebody else's plate. And so I got to give them the same. The, the same. The only thing, though, that I think makes this a little bit crazy is that it on a group date, because I don't know if that shows like a possessiveness. Um, Maybe. We never eat on group dates, though. Oh, well, <laughs> I didn't pick up on that before, but now I will notice that. But we don't even really so eat right. on the one-on-one on the one on one dates. You guys don't even eat on the show. No, the food just sits there for a while and it's kind of cold. And so sometimes I'd pick at it, but usually we would eat beforehand. It's so awkward because we, uh, on the show that I do, Mom, we have to eat a lot. We're always in this, you know. Lucky. In, no, it is, it's because it's so awkward because you don't want to, you have to be articulate mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, it's just awkward. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to like shovel, you're trying to have a realistic scene where you're shoveling food into your mouth and still deliver your lines. Mm -hmm. And it also takes like any enjoyment out of the, the, the flavor. Because <laughs> you can't focus on it probably. You can't focus. <laughs> These are things I've never thought about. <laughs> okay, so on your hometown date, you realize he lives in his parents' garage. <laughs> I don't think I'd give him a rose. No. <laughs> no. Is that mean? I don't think so. 
I don't, just not for me. So he made it all the way to the hometown date. Mm-hmm. And you liked him throughout the entire process. You don't like his living but, situation. But what if? But what if the garage is like decked out? Maybe if it's <gasps> a really cool like, garage. Yeah, yeah. But it's 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 like there's he put windows in there, and does he have his own bathroom? Uh, he's got this amazing porta potty. It's like right, <laughs> but but it's, sold. But yes, <laughs> it also has windows. It's okay. Great. I guess it depends on the circumstance too. You know, maybe they're in between moving. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's an artist. Yeah. It depends, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, on your first overnight date, he tells you he was <laughs> he has to go number two, kind of sheepishly, sweetly. And later, when you go into the bathroom, you notice the soap hasn't been in, unwrapped. Ooh. Mm, that mm. kind of, that really actually freaks me out, I think. The number two part, I'd let it slide. You know, we're all human. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. I think, but, that, I think there's something really charming about, like, confessing, like, mm-hmm. oh, I have, I've got to go. I'm sorry. Wait, yeah. what? It's charming? <laughs> yeah, it's charming to say, like, oh, you know, I'm embarrassed. Explain how that's, I, Maybe how is that charming? That's, that's embarrassing. major bowel issues. By the way, you're on an overnight date. We've on been the on bachelor. group vacations where he has not been he, like he refuses to, to go, go number two. I have. And so many we had to stop at oh a gas God. station. How do you enjoy your the, vacation? It's very tough. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Man. Well, I just don't. I mean, <laughs> luckily, we're old enough now where we don't live with like five people in a room. anymore. Right. That's because so. you make me do ad reads. You fucking dick. <laughs> we're, we're making money now. So we have to <laughs> share a room anymore. <laughs> Moving on up. <laughs> yes. Will you tell us a little bit? I know I don't want to ever put you in an awkward position, but the whole experience of being on such a popular show and now having fame, I don't know. I, I would imagine that it's terrifying and surreal and overwhelming. Yeah, it's very surreal. That's the way to put it. And I think, you know, I've watched the show for a while and I've been a fan and it wasn't until I stepped out of the limo really? last year, night one, where I was like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Because I pulled up in the limo thinking there's going to be like two cameras, you know, the guy would be standing there and we would just have a great night. But there's all of the cameras, all of the lights, so many people around. I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? This is crazy. But, you know, when last season was airing and when we actually started again, there wasn't a, much, a lot of downtime. And so... I really feel like I went from last season, you know, after the final rose to this season. And what's nice in a way is that I don't have my phone, I don't have TV. And so it's kind of just me focused on the journey, really. But now coming back, it's interesting because now I have my phone, I'm back in the real world. And it's weird. It's, you know, sometimes people will want to take photos of me. And I'm like, why would you want that? Like, no one should ever want that. So it's strange. But um, I know that I don't know. I've. Yes. And you get it. I mean. Yeah. And it makes me, I feel so narcissistic because when that happens, sometimes I'm really flattered, but I'm also, I also like, I, I get completely self-conscious. Like, Mm -hmm. am I wearing any makeup? Like, does my skin, like, and which is uh, ugly of me that I should be, that that's where my head goes as opposed to being like, oh, I'm so grateful that this person appreciates me and, you know, has you know, the courage to come up to me and ask me for a photo. And I, and there is uh, like a lot of that too, but I do also get into my head. Like I swear, I started getting recognized, not that I get recognized that much, but before phones, before mm-hmm. like everyone had a camera right. and people would sometimes on rare occasions ask me for like an autograph or something. One time a guy was really bummed that I wasn't Britney Spears but I was really flattered that he thought that I might be. Oh. <laughs> but then I also was sad that I disappointed him. But now it's like the being watched all the time has made me, you know, a little more agoraphobic. And I'm a pleaser. I want people to like me, of course. And so, like, I, I want to give myself to somebody that likes me. And um, and that's that's just tough sometimes. Yeah. But... I'm sorry, Becca. This oh, is all about me. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I can't even imagine, you know, going from the time where, like you said, there was no phones, there wasn't social media to being thrust into this where it's constant now. It's like you always have to see yourself or what people are saying about you in the comments. And it's it's a lot. It really is. And, you know, I'm just experiencing it on a very small dose at this point. But I got to say, you're really good at it. Um, no, I'm in my head a lot too. I'm always like, shoot, did I put on deodorant today? Do I have food in my teeth? Like, it's just, I know. Yeah, it's just human. Yeah, I remember there was like a, 
I felt like I was always in like Us Weekly, like eating a burrito without makeup. <laughs> it was always like <laughs> you're just stars living your best makeup. life. Though. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like us. <laughs> But uh, yeah, well, I'm really excited. So dear listeners, we're recording this show before um, your first episode airs, which mm-hmm. is on Monday. Yeah, one week. And then do you get a break or like after you do promo that sorry, we're having some construction done, <laughs> putting a gate in, Oh, <laughs> which is always a fun way to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> Those good old gates. <laughs> So yeah, the next couple of weeks will be crazy with the premiere. And then luckily I'll have, I think, some downtime in between where I can hopefully go home. <laughs> Make it over here shaking her head like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't really spent much time home yet. We just got back last week from filming. And so I luckily was home for two days quickly. But the turnaround is that quick? Mm-hmm. Well, it's different. So last season for The Bachelors, there's always an extra month because it's the holiday time. And mm-hmm. so last year we had all of December off from when we finished filming to when it started airing. And this time I landed and yeah, it starts a week and a half later, which is kind of nice because now you don't have to wait as long for the season and to really share everything. It's You have that extra month back really where you can finally share stuff with the public I know I always wondered in the past like was the couple like not allowed to see each other for a while so they'll do what they call happy couple weekends and so usually every two or three weeks you can see your person oh okay yeah I'm sorry I thought I just saw like are we giving away secrets right now that we can't talk about bird just flap did you see that (laughs) wait what we're looking (laughs) you no, seriously. Oh. <laughs> Wait, Michael, I'm, I'm confused. Sherman. What's happening Michael right Sherman, now? Michael Sherman, will you look on the ground over there? Oh, oh. it is a bird. Oh, that's Wait, a big-ass bird. bird. A bird flew <laughs> into oh, the did house? Did you see? It was a big bird. And it got all panicked. No? It's gone? It oh. wanted to see your baby deer over there. <laughs> <laughs> we, Sorry. When we were filming the last place. I'm not going to give it away, but where we were, they had huge bats everywhere. And so every time we'd be filming, these big ass bats would be flying by. And I get so sidetracked when I see anything. I'm like, oh, look at that. So they'd be like, stop looking at the flying foxes or whatever. Oh God, that called. would be so me. I'm so, I have like, yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I definitely feel like I have adult ADD. Oh yeah. Sim I, definitely does. <laughs> He's, you have more than that. You're totally like, you know. Does it get... I feel like it's gotten worse for me as I get older now. Now I'm like, oh, there's a lizard. There's a piece of bread. I'm like, I think I it's can't stay focused. It just continues to get worse. Yeah. Because, yeah. Killing our brain, which is actually a great strategy for death eventually because, you know, we get more and more numb, which is a wonderful thing as, <laughs> as we enter. As we enter. Our- the next phases of our lives. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I haven't had that many relationships, but in my previous relationships, I was the one getting broken up with. And I know that this is delicate territory, but the times that it happened, it felt like my hand was sort of forced. Mm -hmm. Like this person was like clearly not in love with me, but I like, we always talk about on the podcast, like how a lot of people and especially women try to make a bad thing work Mm -hmm. because I think that there's this societal pressure of, like I've made this choice and I'm going to do it and I'm going to get married and like have kids because that's what it feels like your parents want you to do. But it's so, it's funny because my parents have always, they've always been so supportive of me and I've always been surprised when they are really supportive of, of a breakup because of my feeling, I think having internalized the idea that women are supposed to do this um, you know, have have a relationship and, and, you know, get married and whatever, stay a virgin and produce like 18 kids or whatever. But I was always surprised when they were like, oh my God, like, we know, we're so happy for you. We just truly want you to be happy. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I hope that your your family was really supportive during yeah. like everything that you totally went through. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because... And I have a weird way of dating the past year because it's, you know, with multiple people. Um, Sometimes helicopters, I imagine. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
it was interesting because my family was pretty skeptical when I started the journey and they didn't think it could work. And then they saw me really fall in love and they saw me go through the breakup and, and be blindsided, but they were really supportive. And again, they, all they said was, we want you to be happy. And so if, if you going on the bachelorette and doing this a second time around, if that's what it's going to take to hopefully find your person then do it. And yeah, they, um, they've seen me go through a lot of relationships and a lot of breakups. And like, I think like you, it was, you know, more so the other party that just wasn't ready. They, my mom really instilled, you know, just be happy with yourself first before you can be happy with anyone else. And that's amazing. My mom used to always tell me to be selfish in love. And I didn't understand what that, and we talk about that in the podcast a lot, but I didn't understand what it meant till later, which was like protecting yourself and protecting mm-hmm. your heart. And essentially the same thing that your mom saying too, that's like, you need to be happy to give somebody else joy mm-hmm. and, and, and that in value mm-hmm. and, yeah, we, t- you know, we have, I don't know if you've ever listened to this podcast before, but we're about to call strangers. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you ready? We're doing it right now? I do have a question, though, before we call them. Yeah. So I'm trying to picture myself if I was a contestant on The Bachelorette mm-hmm. and just walking up to you for the first time and meeting you and then being amongst, I don't know, 30 guys, 20 guys? We had 28. 20, 28? 28? Yeah. I'm like, there were so many, I don't remember. I would be so nervous to talk to you or get FaceTime because I know that in order to get a rose, we have to make these decisions pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. You only have about five minutes to put your best foot forward and make an impression. It's quick. I mean, I can imagine it being a lot of pressure on the guy. When you, when you notice that a guy is nervous, like how do you handle that? Because you know that they're all there for you. I would be so nervous that maybe you wouldn't be able to see me for who I am Mm -hmm. right away. But yet the producers are saying you need to cut 10 dudes like in 20 minutes. Right. How do you handle that? You know, I just wanted to try and make everyone feel as comfortable as possible because I know what it's like on the other side and wanting that time and being complete. I think, you know, the first time I met Ari and stepped out of the limo and the beginning of our first conversation, I blocked out because I was like, holy shit, like this is happening. This is so weird. And so I get it. And I was nervous that night too. And I wanted the guys to still be able to loosen up a little bit so they could at least enjoy everything. And that first night, there's so much going on. And there were, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like there were a couple guys that I didn't talk to that I still gave roses to. And there were some guys that I did talk to that didn't get roses. And it's just, you know, really going off of my gut instinct that night and who I could kind of vibe with, right. who made me feel good, who, you know, I think could loosen up a little bit, but I understand like there's going to be nerves, especially even that first week. It's like no one really gets comfortable, I think, until they're around for a little bit and really get to know the guys and feel comfortable in that setting. And then it, you know, it's a, it's a slow process. So then what turns you on? What turns me on? Yeah. Like in a, in a, <laughs> That's a loaded in a, question. I know. Well, but, but I don't know. Like, I mean, I really like, and this is what I loved about going on the group dates with the guys the entire season is I loved watching the guys interact with one another and when they really did get along because I get that personalities are going to clash but I loved when for the most part the guys could stay out of the drama or still joke with one another and have fun and not be a thousand percent competitive I really appreciate that and just a sense of humor and there were a lot of really great funny goofy guys and I feel like I'm pretty weird and awkward and quirky at times and so I wanted somebody that that was kind of like that or that could appreciate me for me too. Because the opposite is somebody who's so vain and consumed with themselves that they can't like, like putting on a character or a show for you, right? Like it helps them advance or that's what yeah. they think. And it's mm-hmm. it could, because ult- that, that feels like an underestimation of you as a mm-hmm. woman. And we see a lot of them here in LA. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Not that I really experience <laughs> much of that. <laughs> There are some guys that I'm sure that are on that show who are just trying to angle their way to try and become the next Bachelor. Can you spot those guys out? Yeah, I think I will say in the past I haven't made the best decisions for myself, but I feel like going through this time around and really taking it seriously, I had a pretty good picker, and I think I could spot who was here for Becca and who was here for The Bachelorette. And I understand that coming into this, especially because social media is such a huge presence in everyone's lives, that there's a lot of opportunity that can come from this. And I understand, but there were some guys that I knew were only here for that, to promote their business or to get more followers or whatever it might be. I really just had to follow my gut. And I I will say that's one thing that I'm really happy I did the entire season is I think I had, I was pretty in tune with 
you know, keeping the guys around that really were here for me and wanted to get to know me for me. What do you think about when somebody's the messenger? And like, because mm -hmm. it's a complicated idea, right? Yeah. Like we've all, we've all been there. Yeah. It's like, do I say like, it's no good, mm -hmm. but then am I presenting myself as uh, with a different, uh, like my own agenda? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? It was, it's interesting because last season when I was one of many girls, I tried to really stay out of all the drama and I didn't ever want to go into my time with Ari talking about the other girls because I didn't want to waste my time. That wasn't on us. And, and, um, with the guys, I really appreciated the ones that didn't as well, but there were some, there was a, a good amount of drama that happened. And, you know, when it's petty stuff, I liked when they wouldn't always tell me and I could kind of figure it out on my own because I'm, there's a lot that I don't see, but I still was able to pick up on a lot. And um, that's interesting. Yeah. But when there was major things, I liked when the guys would come and say like, Hey, look, we don't want to get into this just so you know, this is happening. Do what you want. Have a conversation with that person about it. And so um, at times I appreciated it. I felt like the guys that I was really into had my back when they really needed to have my back. And then they just let the other guys handle it themselves. And that's when I really was able to pick up and make decisions too. Because we get that. Yeah, we get um, calls about that a lot. Like, should I be the messenger? And it's, it is such a tricky, mm -hmm. it's a, such a dilemma. And because, you know, there's always, you know, motives, but yeah. And it's so situational know. too. Yeah. For sure. All right. So Becca, do you know how this works? We're actually going to, I'm so sorry, listeners, about the. No, I'm not sorry, dear listeners. Um, <laughs> for apparently for my own safety, for my non-existent stalker, there's a gate being installed and it's really annoying Sam. <laughs> Uh, well, we're going to try and do this without I hope, with the I hope I get a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone out there? <laughs> Becca, you know where I live now. I'll be your oh stalker. Oh, I would love that. I'm a pretty good climber. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> Climb right over that fence. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to go out and be like, who's sitting on top of that right now? It's Becca again. <laughs> Becca. Can't get rid of her. <laughs> This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Warby Parker. Warby Parker was founded with a rebellious spirit and the lofty goal of creating boutique quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point. Sunglasses, with or without a prescription, start at $95 and, just like eyeglasses, are available through their home try-on program. You just choose five pairs and see which ones you like. I was surprised by how quickly they arrived, which presented me with the immediate problem of deciding which ones to keep. I loved all of them, so you can guess what happened. And not only can you feel good about how cool you look, you can also feel good knowing that for every pair of glasses sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need through partnerships with nonprofits like Vision Spring. Offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams, Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores. So put your FSA or HSA dollars to good use on Warby Parker prescription glasses, prescription sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash unqualified. That's W-A-R-B-Y p a r k e r dot com slash unqualified. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by State Farm. And in honor of their surprisingly great auto insurance rates, I'm going to tell you about a particularly surprising day on set. It takes me a long time to read a script. For almost every line of dialogue, I will stop to figure out why my character would say it, how it fits in the conversation, and how it's going to come out of my mouth. Between the lines, there are larger chunks of text which describe everything else happening in the scene. 
maybe what a room looks like, what characters are wearing, and what they're doing. As I often underestimate how long everything in my life takes, I know I can make up some time by reading those larger chunks a little faster. I got the script for Overboard about six months before we started production. I read it in my warm living room, wearing comfortably warm clothes, sipping from a warm mug of tea. Somehow, it never occurred to me that when you jump off a boat in the middle of the ocean, the water is surprisingly cold. And it doesn't get any warmer on take two. Here at Unqualified, we love State Farm because they provide coverage that meets your needs at a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. All right, so we're going to call Aaron now. Laura, will you dial Aaron? Aaron is in Pennsylvania, and she's 24. Aaron. Hello? Hey, Aaron, it's Sim. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing really well. Anna, say hi to Aaron. Hi, thanks so much for, for being a part of our crazy podcast and experiment. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Um, we're here with Becca Kufrin. And um, she's about to uh, have the first uh, Bachelorette show. What? It's Monday. Monday. Yeah. Yes. What do you mean by first Bachelorette show? I mean, I just meant like her first episode. Is oh, her first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, I'm not very articulate. You knew that. Aaron, I'm sorry. So, Aaron, tell us what's going on with this guy that you uh, matched up with on Bumble. Sure. Yeah. So, um, about two and a half months ago, um, I matched with this guy on Bumble and we just basically like immediately hit it off, um, immediately traded numbers. But the thing is he would, once we traded numbers, we only talked on Snapchat after that, about a month and a half into it, we, he kind of just like all out of the blue said like, I love you. And I like didn't say it back. Cause it was like, we never met. Um, he always also kind of brought up like, wanting to go on a date and really is getting to know each other in person. And I was always the one who'd be like, all right, like when and where, like, let's make a plan for it. Like, let's just stop talking about it. And he would never really respond to that. Uh, he just kind of ignored that. Um, his excuse is always that like we live too far away from each other, even though it was only like a half hour, 45 minutes. Um, and also we both lived with our parents, which is kind of like a red flag to me. Um, so about two weeks ago, um, I just kind of got fed up again. I was like, look, like, are we ever going to meet? Um, how about we make a deal if the Yankees sweep the Red Sox? Like, we have to hang out this week. <laughs> that was cute. He was just kind of like, I'm busy. Like, I can't. So I was like, all right, well, I give up. I was like, I didn't mean it in a malicious way. I was just kind of like, I don't want to play games anymore. Like, I really like you. And it's kind of clear that I don't think, like, you like me enough um, as well. So two days later after that, he, had, he didn't talk to me. And then all of a sudden, I scrolled down on Snapchat and saw – the little gray arrow, which means that he blocked me. And then I checked Bumble and he blocked me on Bumble as well. So I still have the guy's number. And I'm just kind of like the person who really likes to like stand up for herself and be like, you can't treat me that way. Like I really liked you and it's not okay the way you treated me. So I don't know if I should even like contact this guy at all. Uh, Sim, this, this might be one for you and Becca, but I, I'm not quite sure there, there's something really uh, that makes me uneasy about this whole interaction in terms, uh, like his unwillingness to be upfront with you and honest at all. Like the clues that you've been given are so few and far between. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So you guys had this great text relationship or snap relationship where you guys would talk for a while over text? Yeah. Yeah. We talked every day for like two months and like, it, it felt like we were like really growing, like something like pretty strong and, he, like I said, he was always the one who initiated like, hey, let's hang out. And then I would be like, okay, when? And then he wouldn't respond. So I know that the red flags are there, but I just feel like he kind of, he still like, he gave me all the clues that he led to me as well. He's just sounds so immature. Yeah. yeah. Is he your age, Aaron? Um, he's about six months older than me, yeah. I mean, the first thing is, it's it's clear that obviously this guy is, I mean, you shouldn't ever talk to, I mean, I guess the question is, should she say something to him? Because you should definitely not try and rekindle anything that you had over any kind of, uh, you know, text relationship that you had. Should she say something to the guy or should she just like let it go? 
I no. mean, I would, I would let it go to be honest. I, and I, I'm totally all for you sticking up for yourself and, you know, being a strong, badass woman. But I think it's his loss. He didn't realize the great thing that he had. And, you know, one day maybe he'll look back and regret it, but I don't think you need to go out of your way to do anything else. Just stand strong and, you know, focus on what you do and don't want in a future relationship. And then, you know, going off of him, that's not what you want. I think he has a big secret. Yeah. And, and I think that it's either, a girlfriend it's clearly that he liked you and he, and he enjoyed you know flirting with you but he wants to like when push comes to shove like he didn't he didn't want to and I'm just worried that you would be making yourself vulnerable and I don't know if you would get the truth I can see from Aaron's standpoint she's upset she's pissed off that this guy blocked right. her on social media yeah. so I would be upset as well yeah but I bet doesn't it reek of like a girlfriend being like, what the Very fuck? Shady. Right. You're right. like, you're yeah. like texting who or like whatever, Snapchatting, like. Yeah, his actions, I think, just seem pretty extreme for the fact that you guys had never met in person. Right. To go from talking every day to completely blocked just seems, yeah, something's up there. And he said, I love you. Is that is that what you told us? He said, I love you. Yeah. Why would he say that without ever meeting you? I have no idea. <laughs> It's like, I know that's why I feel like he just kind of like straight up manipulated me in a way, but it's still like, it just doesn't make sense to me because he was like really genuine at most of the time. I'm kind of obsessed with that MTV show, you know, Catfished. Do you think that he was portraying himself as, you know, somebody different and he got really scared with the idea of actually meeting you because he was... Who cares? That's At this point, he, he blocked her. At this point, well, that's fuck what I'm this guy. Oh, oh right? totally. She shouldn't be examining why this guy blocked her. I agree with you guys. She should yeah, not talk to this no, guy again. No, 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 no. But I just want Aaron to feel a little bit better in terms of like, I can so relate to the idea of like having, you know, like this, in what feels like an intimate relationship, even if you haven't like met in right. person. And so I, I just want her, Aaron, sorry, I don't mean to talk about you as though you're not on the phone with us, right. <laughs> but, I, but you know, it very, it, it's clearly his own issue. He probably misses you and is terrified to meet you in person because maybe he portrayed himself as somebody that he isn't. But having said all of that, I still don't think that that's reason enough for you to, um, to pursue anything. If you were emotionally attached to him and exchanged like, so, you know, a lot of communication with depth, maybe you could say something like, listen, I always enjoyed our communication and I have a lot of strong feelings towards you. I miss you. Um, and if, if you're not like, some of my friends, meaning us, Becca, <laughs> Sim, and myself, <laughs> brought up the idea that maybe you know you you weren't you aren't exactly who you say you are. I just want you to know that uh, I'd still would love to be in communication with you or friends if you feel that way. But if you don't, I, I just the, all of this is too it's too hidden for your pursuing him. In fact, it it almost it it borders you know. On creepy. Am I getting yeah, dramatic? No, it, it's completely creepy. Yeah. So I, I think that um, you should examine. We don't know like what your text communication was, but you should maybe examine that a little bit and um, and see if and, and maybe you know in a month from now, um, see how you feel, what your emotional attachment is. And if you're still sort of missing him or communicating with him and because who knows, maybe he's just a, a really lonely guy who doesn't have a lot of confidence and doesn't feel great about himself. Still, the level like a level of deception is odd. And it seems to me like massive red flag. Oh, I'm sorry, Aaron. Aaron, is this okay? This advice? God. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, of course. I'm I mean, sorry, time, heals, though. time heals all wounds. You know what? You're 24. The world is your oyster. You're going to find somebody way, way better, and you're going to look back on this guy and laugh. You're 100% correct, yeah. Rebecca. And I'll laugh with you. When I was, um, oh, God, I was like 16. What was that first? We figured it out the other day. Um, the like One of the first social communication sites. through oh, Friendster? No, MySpace. My, was it uh -uh. MySpace? Nope. It's no. even before then. Before Renster? Yes. It was uh oh God, what was it? 
Fuck. Oh, like AOL Messenger? Some, or Prodigy? Yeah, it, it, okay. Prodigy, Prodigy, Prodigy. 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 Yeah. I met this guy, Aaron, on Prodigy uh, in New Jersey. And, uh, and we had this like online romance and he was like i'd love to take you to prom and i was like i would love for you to do that too and we had like we, we would talk like every night and it felt dizzyingly like it just just the idea of like expanding my world at that time felt so so good and I'm proud to say that we're still friends. That's amazing. I didn't, I I didn't know that's guy. how the story was going to end. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jason. I don't know if I don't know if you're out there. <laughs> Let's call Jason next. But do. but anyway, but I think that you know sometimes like the liberation of intimacy without um, being in proximity of one another uh, can be very heady. But but I don't think that you should reach out to him. I bet I bet anything he he misses you and he wishes that you know he could be with you. But um, but I don't I I'm not crazy at all about the way that he um has been dishonest. Aaron, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, thank you, Aaron. Aaron. Thanks Take so care. much. Good luck. And dear listeners, also I'm sure there's a lot of stories out here like this. So please please let us know what you think. We've been loving all the feedback. And Aaron, thank you so much. Bye, Aaron. I love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> love you too. Bye. <laughs> she giggled when she said, I love you. I don't know if it was genuine or not. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a sign? Do we read into this? I don't know. <laughs> I've been tell I, I tell people that I, I love them because I do. I love our listeners. But there's always that sense of rejection when they don't <laughs> say it back. Yeah. To say, to see because, if they say it back. Right. Sometimes they get a little uncomfortable. It's a, it, well, yeah. Them. It's an overwhelming thing to say to That's somebody. That's like my girlfriends. Because I, I tell my friends I love them all the time. And one of them is always like, okay, back a bye. And I'm like, tell me you love me back. Come on. <laughs> All right, we have one more call, and then we can end the show. So we're going to call Megan now. And Laura, if you don't mind dialing Megan. Megan. Megan is in Connecticut, and she is 25. Wait, but what, can we talk about the age thing again at some point? Sim always insists on saying... Well, it's, Hello? Oh, it's just... It's, it, I'll tell you later. Yeah, it's, we'll talk about it later. It's yeah. really important, though. I think you're right. Because you have to know but where they are in their lives. Hi. It's, hi, Megan. Sorry, Megan. Hi. Anna's <laughs> yelling okay. at me as like she does. Hey, um, thanks so much for being a part of our show and listening to our horrible... Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Horrible advice. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for doing this. And Anna's going to introduce our special guest to you. And um, we have Bacon. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Bacon. Oh. I may have had a little wine. <laughs> we have Becca Kufrin, who um, is the new bachelorette, and we're really excited. She's yeah, that's smart. so exciting. Hi, Megan. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thanks. So, what's this about this gym crush you have that has arms like a Disney prince? What does that even mean, Disney prince? Yes. Is this like Aladdin arms or Beast arm? Maybe it's a Gaston arm. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, Disney princes always have really nice arms in the cartoon. I don't know. I'm a sucker for, like, nice kind of beefy arms, I guess. Is this like a John Smith from Pocahontas? Yeah. <laughs> like, any, any Disney prince. All Disney princes are applicable in this situation. Okay. <laughs> so tell us what's going but, on. Yeah, there's this guy at the gym, and he is gorgeous. I've been staring at him creepily while I work out for, like, about a month now. And he and I were both in the grocery store together, and he actually came up to me, found me in an aisle. I was getting body wash, and he introduced himself, and we made small talk, and we were flirting. And since then, we've been, you know, flirting a lot at the gym, making small talk. So I went home, and I looked I love this. him <laughs> up on Facebook because I wanted to, you know, continue the conversation. And the first thing I saw is that he has a kid which is fine, not a problem, but then I was kind of curious to see what the situation was. So I came across what may or may not be his wife's Facebook page, and they have a lot of pictures together, but it's very private, so I can't see much. And the most recent photo was in 2017. So I don't know if he's married or separated or what the deal is, but he tells so many of my boxes of what I'm looking for in a person. So 
I don't really know how to proceed and want to know what would you suggest. If he's married, I don't want to get into that at all. Yeah. He's like, he doesn't wear a ring, right, Aaron? He does not wear a ring. So, okay, so... He might still be married. I don't know. I like it that he... It sounds like he wasn't... Like, while he was friendly, he wasn't overtly aggressive. Is that would is that the good characterization of that encounter? Yes, he's very story? he's very friendly, but he's definitely approaching me at the gym. Definitely very flirtatious. Okay, oh. so he's hitting on he's definitely hitting on you, which means he's probably not married, or or hopefully, might be, yeah, exactly, or with his wife at the time. Um, hey, Megan, how did you find out his like like his last name? Oh, well, we actually both went to school in the same city, so. I just entered his name and where he went to school. It's making me sound so creepy. We've all done it. <laughs> We've all but been there. He came right out. He was the first person I didn't have to dig. And he also has a different first name, so it wasn't very challenging. Do you have any any mutual friends? No. The other thing is, is I found out he's 12 years older than me. Well, okay. And I didn't, that's not I a didn't big, know that's that at 37. First. That's not old. No, that's not a big deal. Listen, no. who knows? You know, maybe he, maybe he has gone through a separation or whatever. Do you and, think yeah, that she should just ask him out on a date just to find out? I would. You would. I, I would. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say though, like, hey, I'd really, I'd, I'd love to like get a drink um, or a coffee sometime, but I just want to make sure that you're single. Um, at, and I mean, she, well, she doesn't good. have to say I like that. that. She doesn't you know, have to she, say, I just want to make sure you're single. Why, that's a why, leading question. Why can't you ask, are you single? Why can't you ask him out? And, and, and if he says yes, that means he's probably single. No. He's a complete dick. No. You'll find out. No. Soon. Most men are not. They're, what? They're not going to say. What? Okay. I don't want to go out on a date with someone who's married, though. What right. But you'll married? find out. But you'll find. I'm, I think I, I, I think if you ask him straight up, are you single? Like, are you why? Make, I, what would be wrong with that? What's wrong with it? just asking him out? And, and if he says yes, he's probably single. Probably not. <laughs> I don't, Dude. That's what, what I'm afraid fuck? of. What if he's married and he still says yes? Yes. Yes. Then you exactly. find out afterwards and then this becomes a better story and the guy's a complete better fucking Better story? Dick. Well, better story like five years yeah, down the road. Yeah, for you. <laughs> Sim, emotionally removed I, from Megan. I just think that it may come across as weird because then he might think that, oh, were you looking me up? Did you see my... I, mean, I don't think that... You shouldn't ask him, are you single? I mean, if you're going to ask him out, he'll tell, he'll tell you. Yeah, you could go up to him and preface it with, hey, I don't know what your status is, what your deal is, but... You know, we've That's seen good. each other a That's couple better. times. We've talked in the grocery Great. store. We work out at the same gym. If you're interested, let's grab a drink. And then that way you're saying, I don't know where you're at in life. But if you can, if you want to, let's get, let's get a drink. Let's get dinner. Yeah. And then yeah. hopefully if he's a okay. stand up guy, he can say, thanks. Like, this is so kind. I'm flattered, but I have a girlfriend or I have a wife or, you know, I can't. Or hopefully he can. Right. You don't I'm know. actually, I'm probably going to see him today. So at the gym? in about like 30 minutes. Oh yeah, my God. I'm Megan, will gym. you please, please keep us posted? Can you? Yeah, I want to know. We're always there at the same time. I, I bet that, I mean, you know, without knowing this guy, I, I can't, I don't know if like his vibe is like bordering on creep or if he's like genuinely sort of a shy guy who who is um who's scared to ask you out he's come off very very kind and respectful i definitely don't get a creepy vibe at all and i very frequently think guys are being creepy i get a lot of creepy guys so this guy's a he's refreshing oh good well okay so you should ask him out tonight or today yeah all right all right, right? Sim. All and right then let yeah. us and email me afterwards yeah and let us know what he says seriously yeah. right? okay what do you think yeah I would love to know ASAP. Okay. What is Me too. I know. <laughs> I know. What do I this, say? I also want oh, you to she wants to know what to say. Following Sim's advice, I would, even though I'm reluctant to say this, I would, I would just truly say like, hey, would you want to grab a drink sometime? I like that. And leave it at that and leave, okay. if you can, a pause because that's always the hardest thing for people is, at least for me, is to stop talking and then I like dig myself into a rabbit hole with mm -hmm. situations. So I, I think. Right. Um, I, Is it weird that he hasn't asked for my number though? Yeah, you might well, just be shy. that's what makes me think he's married. Yeah. I mean, listen, I feel like if I were to witness any of this interaction while I'm on a treadmill, I would be able to tell you, like, Megan, 
no, this dude's a fucking creep. Or I could say like, you know what? He seems actually really shy and hesitant to approach you and he's, he's really into you. But I, but I just, I don't, I don't know. So I think that approaching him with um, a, like confidence and, and just a simple like, do you want to grab a drink? Like shows your strength and also challenges him. And, um, and you know, the worst, I guess, he says, um, I'm a convicted felon. <laughs> 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 just, I just got, but, or, but yeah, or maybe he says, uh, like, I'm really attracted to you. I'm married. My marriage is in trouble, which that also like lends itself to a whole other yeah. call <laughs> that we'll have yeah, with you. No, <laughs> but if, if he's married or not divorced, then I'm not interested yeah. Especially since he has a kid. Like, I don't want to get into that at all. But would you date him if he was married but separated? I don't know. I I would want a divorce coming. You know, I wouldn't want to just in... I think that's a sensitive, like, area. I wouldn't want to disrespect anything if they wanted to work something out, you know? Or in, they might just... He would maybe need some time, too. Yeah. You well, never know. Yeah, but it sounds like he is really interested in you. And, you know, and I think... I think you should trust your gut and um, ask him out. Ask him out. Yeah. Yeah. And this then, is 2018. And then Go for it, girl. You'll, <laughs> you'll get some answers okay, I'm gonna, immediately I'm gonna do with it. his. If I see him today, I will do it. Will you email me after? Let me know what he says. Yes, absolutely. But Megan, clock his uh, expression because you may okay. get a sense immediately if he is a liar or not. Right. Yes. And that's what I am afraid of. I definitely don't want to get involved with someone who's who's like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And I don't want you to be hurt. Um, but, um, yeah. But oh, he let has us really know. Nice arms, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hey, best case scenario. He's single. You guys go out, you hit it off. You have he, cute babies one day with Prince arms. Yep. And you're a step mommy. <laughs> 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 okay. I will, I will ask him out today. Oh, all right. Hey, Megan, please, please, please let us know what happens. And thank you. And I love you. I will. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. Thanks, I love Megan. You too. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. I would never know how. I'm the worst person to give advice ever. That was great. I, no, this is perfect. You yeah, guys. I don't know. I wouldn't know how to hit on anybody. What you just did was perfect. Just ask. It's that simple. Yeah, it's it's simple. so easy to say it. It's easy for girls to just ask no. any guy out. I think no, no, they no. Should, if they just had the confidence to do I think it, that's it's true. Easy. See, I never used to until probably. A year before coming on the show last time, I was like, you know, what do I have to lose? If they're not into me, they're not into me. At least I know. And I remember the first time I did, I was like, this is kind of exhilarating right now. And we went on a date. It didn't work out. It was terrible. But at least I did it. Yeah. But it, it, it is weird. At first, I was always like, oh, no, I don't want to be rejected. I don't know what to say. I'm awkward. What if he doesn't find me cute? But yeah, it's just like, luckily, I had my girlfriends to talk through and they're like, just go for it. What do you have to lose? If nothing else, we'll drink wine and talk crap about exactly. it. Exactly. But is that like in my teens and 20s, I would never have had the confidence to ask anybody out. And of course, like, who wouldn't want to go out with you, Becca? <laughs> A lot of people. <laughs> 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 Becca, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. This is so much Congratulations. Fun. This is great. I'm Thanks. so excited. I'm s- and you seem so fucking happy. I am. And I'm really, really glad. I'm thank really happy you. for you. I really can't wipe the smile off my face. <laughs> I love that. That's oh awesome. my God. Love is real. <laughs> it is. I'm maybe witnessing not. it, dear <laughs> listeners. I love it. If there's a like if there's a dude that you pick, maybe when you after the whole season you come back and with a guy. If you mm-hmm. felt like it. Yeah. Like we it. could make a whole thing of it. Yeah. A barbecue. Mm-hmm. We don't even have to be Oh boring. hell yeah. <laughs> I'm holding you guys to this. I would okay. love that. <laughs> hey, dear listeners, thank you so much. We love you. Good night, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.